Mga posibleng tanong na maaaring lumabas ngayong darating na Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination ang alay ko sa inyo for today. 15 board exam type of questions with rationalization that will cover your foundation of nursing practice. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I created my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos once a week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help and know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, nurses, let's jump into the video hello everybody wherever you are right now whatever time zone you're watching me right now just wish you good morning good afternoon and good night just in case i don't get to see you oh. isa pa ni bagong nursing test banking videos nga ang alay ko sa inyo for today dahil ngayon kagaya nung sinabi ko kanina sa intro 15 sets of board exam type of questions na posible mong ma-encounter ngayon darating na board exam kaya naman kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test banking videos na create ko i'll be putting the actual playlist on the description box so simply click this icon button kapag nagpapot yun any time on this video. Ngayon, um, gusto ko lang rin i-grab yung opportunity na to to thank everybody who's watching right now, especially you, for subscribing to my channel. You guys are so amazing. We're near to 15,000. Maraming 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 salamat po. Ngayon, hindi ko na patatagalin pa. In order for me to do that, let me switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi everyone, welcome back sa ating formal discussion ng yung Foundation of Nursing Practice. Um, isang another entry, isang another entry nga naman natin ulit para sa ating nursing test banking. Nako, nalalapit na naman yung board exam for this year ha. At nako, marami naman sa inyo ang talaga namang um, nagre-ready na, kinakabahan na kung ano-ano pang mga nararamdaman nyo, I've been there, been done that. Kaya naman, gagawin ko tong video na to sa inyo uh, para tulungan kayo sa paghahanda nyo ngayong darating na board exam. No, kagaya nung sinabi ko sa video, nursing test banking nga po ito. I have a lot of nursing test banking videos on my channel that is all for you. Use them. Maraming maraming salamat nga po pala sa support nyo. Kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung ibang mga nursing test banking videos ko, kasama na may ibang mga videos ko sa aking channel related sa nursing education. Education. I'll be putting the playlist on the description box. All of it is on the description box. And kapag nagpapat yung icon button, panoori mo yung kasi nandyan sila lahat. Ngayon, hindi na tayo magpapatupik tong pick pa. Pero bago yan, pampag good vibes. Nako, if you want me to stick around, please make sure to subscribe. Don't just watch. Subscribe. Because, you know, that really helps the channel. Okay? So, let's proceed. Let me give you the objectives for our today's discussion. Well, on this uh, particular video, just like I said, we only have two objectives every time we do a nursing test banking video. Well, one, I'm going to provide you and discuss board exam type of questions. And then I will also be providing you rationalization for each board exam type of questions. Simple, right? Now, let me provide to you the instructions for today's exam. Now, let this be your actual preparation. Like, think about this um, video or whenever you're answering this video uh, lecture. As if you're taking the board exam. If there's only 15 questions in the board exam, how well you want yourself to perform. Galing na English, no? Ay, char. Okay, so let me give you the instructions. Now, you'll be given 15 board exam type of questions. I'll be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have 5 seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck, nurses. Pasensya na po sa boses ko. Medyo ngungo tayo for today's video. Kasi nga po, wait lang. May sipon po ako, so pasensya na. Yun din po ang dahilan kung bakit lately is hindi ako masyado nakakapag-upload because I'm really, really, really sick. I'm not yet dying though. <laughs> so hinga-hinga, hingang malalim. Eto na nga tayo. Board exam time question number one. Which element in the circular chain of infection can be eliminated by preserving skin integrity? Easy question, right? Alin daw... Ang may eliminate. So, ang tanong is about um, uh, the chain of infection. Itong hinihingi sa'yo, which element, element ng chain of infection nandito sa picture na to, ang pwede mo ma-preserve uh, by eliminating, uh, eliminating by preserving skin integrity. 
Alin daw doon mga moms? Is it a host? Is it B, reservoir? Is it C, mode of transmission? Or D, portal of entry? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. What is yours? Uh, your answer, it is letter D. Portal of entry. Skin, diba? So, you know, skin. So, let me give you the rationalization. In the circular chain of infection, pathogens must be able to leave their reservoir and be transmitted to a susceptible host through a portal of entry such as broken skin. Malino bayon? Malino. Body some type of question number two. Which of the following most probably result in a break in sterile technique for respiratory isolation. Is it A, opening the patient's window to the outside environment? B, turning on the patient's room ventilator? C, opening the door of the patient's room leading into the hospital corridor? Or D, falling or failing to wear gloves when administering a bed bath? Your five seconds starts now. Ang karamihan sa mga tanong na serve ko sa inyo ngayon more infection control. PNLE1. Okay, nice. Time's up na tayo. Anong sagot nyo, mga nurses? Nakuha ba? Nakuha. Nako. Ito ha, letter C is the right answer. Opening the door of the patient's room leading into the hospital corridor. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is respiratory isolation. Now, let me explain to you what is respiratory isolation further. Respiratory isolation, like strict isolation, requires that the door to the, uh, that the door to the door, patient's room remain closed. Diba? Puro door. However, the patient's room should be well ventilated. So, opening the window or turning on the vent uh, ventricular Ventricular is desirable. The nurse does not need to wear gloves for respiratory isolation, but good hand ha uh, hand washing is important for all types of isolation. All right. So hence the answer is letter C. For exam type question number three, which of the following patient is at greater risk for contracting a, uh, I mean, an infection? Alin daw sa mga choices na to, mga patients na to, A, B, C, D, ang high risk for infection. That's the question. Is it A, a patient with leukopenia? B, a patient receiving broad-spectrum antibiotics? Is it C, a post-operative patient who has undergone orthopedic surgery? Is it D, a newly diagnosed diabetic patient? Medyo tricky itong tanong na to, pero bibigyan kita ng 5 seconds. And it starts right now. Time's up, nurses. What is your answer? Very good. Letter A, a patient with leukopenia. Bakit? Wait, uh, well, a leukopenia is a decreased number of leukocytes, white blood cells, and we all know these are important in resisting infection. None of the other situation would put the patient at risk for contracting an infection. Taking broad-spectrum antibiotics might actually reduce the infection risk. Hence, the answer is letter A, period. Board exam type of question number four. Effective hand washing requires the use of... Alin daw dito? Ang gagamitin mo sa mga choices na to para maging effective ang hand washing mo. Period. That's the question. Ang sipon ko dahi. Is it A, soap or detergent to promote emulsification? Is it B, hot water to destroy bacteria? Sige, lapnosin mo ang balat mo. Is it C, a disinfectant to increase surface tension? And D, all of the above. Nako, ingat-ingat sa all of the above, ha, nurses? Your five seconds start now. Oh, mo talaga ako dahi. Hindi mo maitindihan. Time is up, nurses. What is the answer? Letter A, soap or detergent to promote emulsification. Why? Soaps and detergents are used to help remove bacteria because of their ability to lower the surface tension of water and act as emulsifying agent. Hot water may lead to skin irritation or burns, which means that you're going to have break in the skin, which means that a uh, portal of entry for pathogens. You don't want that. So, A is the right answer. Nako, nakakarami na tayo. Nakakaapat na tayo. Kumusta ang mga scores nyo? Pakilagay ang scores nyo sa baba at the end of this video. Okay? I'll be more than happy to evaluate your scores. 
47 tayo question number 5. After routine patient contact, hand washing should be at least. Gano daw katagal ang hand washing? That's the question. Huwag masyadong hirapan ang sarili mo dahi. Tinatalong ka lang ng duration. Nandito na po sa picture para mas naalala ng mga visual learners natin dyan ha. Gamitin nyo to. Is it A, 30 seconds? Is it B, 1 minute? Is it uh, C, 2 minute? Or D, 3 minutes? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good letter. A, 30 seconds. And dyan na nga, oh. Dyan na, oh. Diba? Well, depending on the degree of exposure to pathogens, hand washing may last from 10 seconds to 4 minutes. After a mi uh, um, I'm sorry. After a routine patient contact, hand washing for 30 seconds effectively minimizes the risk of pathogen transmission. Malino ba yon? Malino. Nako, we're one-fourth through. One-fourth through. Oo, oh, oo. Oh. Kung hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe, mag-subscribe ka nang gigigil ako sa'yo. Ito na tayo. Kahit may sakit ako, pinupush ko to ako sa inyo kasi mahal na mahal ko kayo, guys. Nako, maraming maraming salamat nga po pala. Naalala ko lang pa, 15,000 na tayo. Woo! Sweet, sweet, sweet. Maka-reach kaya tayo ng 100k this year. I-share nyo kasi tong video na to para naman mas marami kaalam. Sharing is caring kay Selfish. Marami na sasabi sa akin karamihan doon sa mga board exam type of questions ko. Lumabas nung actual board. So, malay nyo, hindi ba? Oh, saya-saya. Next, board exam type of question number 6. Which of the following procedures always require surgical asepsis? The question is, anong procedure ang nagre-require ng surgical asepsis? Pamilyar ba kayo sa concept ng surgical asepsis? Kung hindi kayo pamilyar, pamilyar... <laughs> <laughs> Kung hindi familiar dito sa concept nito, let me know sa comment section sa baba, gagawa tayo ng video material, lecture material regarding surgical asepsis. So, alin dito ang nagre-require ng surgical asepsis? Is it A, vaginal installation of conjugated estrogen? B, urinary catheterization? C, nasi gastric tube insertion? Or D, colostomy irrigation? Your five seconds starts... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me, let me change my... What is wrong... All right, your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Letter B, urinary catheterization. Now, the urinary system is normally free of microorganisms except at the urinary meatus. Any procedure that involves entering this system must use surgical aseptic me uh, measures to maintain a bacteria-free state. Period. For example, I have a question number seven. A sterile technique is used whenever. Kailang kado gumagamit ng sterile technique? Yun ang tanong nurses. A. Strict isolation is required. B. Terminal disinfection is performed. C. Invasive procedures are in are uh, performed. Or D. Protective isolation is necessary. Your five seconds starts now. Basic question. Nahirapan ba kayo dito sa tanong na to? Nako, nako. Time's up na ha. What is the answer? Letter C. Invasive procedures are performed. Ito, makinig kayo sa rationalization nurses. All invasive procedures including surgery, catheter insertion, and administration of parenteral therapy require sterile technique to maintain a sterile environment. All equipment must... A little bit... Ngungungo ako dahi. Isa pa, take two. All, equip all equipment must be sterile and the nurse and the physician must wear sterile gloves and maintain surgical asepsis. In the operating room, the nurse and physicians are required to wear sterile gowns, gloves, mask, hair covers, and shoe covers for all invasive procedures. Strict isolation requires the use of clean gloves, masks, gowns, and equipment to prevent the transmission of highly communicable diseases by contact or by airborne, uh, airborne route. Ito pa, terminal disinfection, ha? Iniisa-isa ko sa inyo. Is the disinfection of all contaminated supplies and equipment after a patient has been discharged to prepare them for reuse by another patient. The purpose of protective or reverse isolation is to prevent a person with seriously impaired resistance from coming into contact who potentially pathogenic organisms. Alright? Protective isolation na karamitan ginagawa to sa mga chemotherapy patients. Or reverse isolation. ba diba? Sa mga chemotherapy patients, sa mga nagre-receive ng radiation, kasi immune, yung immune system nila is mababa. So, 
Okay, yun yun. Malino ba yun? Malina. Board exam type of question number 8. Which of the following constitutes a break in sterile technique while preparing a sterile field for a dressing change? Alin daw dito ang nagpapakita ng pagbasag. Pagbasag! Break na literal yung sinira mo yung sterile technique while preparing a sterile field. Is it A, using a sterile forceps rather than sterile gloves to handle a sterile item? B. Touching the outside wrapper of sterilized material without sterile gloves. C. Placing a sterile object on the edge of the sterile field. D. Pouring out a small amount of solution, for example, 15 to 30 milli uh, ml? Millimeters? Millimeters? ML. Tama. Millimeters while... Uh, before pouring the isol uh, before pouring the solution into a sterile container. I don't know what's wrong with me. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Letter C. Nako, medyo common sense itong tanong na ito. Medyo tricky siya, actually. But here's the reason why. Now, the edge of a sterile field are considered contaminated. Period. When sterile items are allowed to come in contact with the edges of the field, the sterile items are also become the sterile, the sterile items become contaminated. Hence, the answer is letter C. Period. Board exam type of question number nine: A natural body defense that plays an active role in preventing per, uh, infection is a uh, natural body defense. Do natin na nagprotect sa atin against infection. That's a question. Alin dito? Is it yawning? Is it B, body hair? Is it C, hiccuping? Or D, rapid eye movement? Sa poking kita kapag sinagat mo up, rapid eye movement, baka nagdodroga ka. Charing, your fast second starts now. Gusto mo yung paghigo pa tayo ng kape dahil. Okay. Time's up. What is the answer, nurses? Letter B, body hair. Hence the picture. Well, a hair on... Hair on or within body areas such as the nose, traps, and hold and holds particles that contains microorganisms. Yawning or hiccuping do not prevent microorganisms from entering or leaving the body. Rapid eye movement marks the stage of sleep during which dreaming occurs. Okay, so hence the answer is letter B. Nako, last six questions na tayo. Make it count. Make it count. By the way, ha, huwag kayo mapapresya pag sinasabi kong make it count. The main intention, again, just like I said on the intro, the eh, main intention of this video is for you guys to really have the full grasp of the rationalization so that when you encounter them on the actual board exam, kahit balibaliktad yung choices, balibaliktad yung uh, na-reword yung tanong, same concept, same uh, same concept yung nag-a-apply. Alam mo kung paano siya sagutin kasi you know the reason why. Ganun naman tayo sa nursing, lagi tayo may rationalization, hindi ba? Mahilig tayo mag-explain. Charing! Next, board exam type of question number 10. All of the following statements are true about donning sterile gloves, except negative question. Alin dito ang mali about sa donning sterile gloves? That's the question. That's how you approach this type of questions, you guys. Pag may mga except-except na ganyan, uso ito sa NCLEX, uso rin ito sa board exam. PNLE. Okay. So, A, the first glove should be picked up by grasping the inside of the cuff. B, the second glove should be picked up by inserting the glove uh, fingers under the cuff outside the glove. C, the gloves should be adjusted by sliding the gloved fingers um, under the sterile cuff and pulling the glove over the wrist. Or D, the inside of the glove is considered sterile. Your five seconds starts now. I hope you don't mind me sipping my coffee, you guys. Okay. All right. All right. What is the answer? Letter D. Very good. The inside of the glove is considered sterile. The inside of the glove is always considered to be clean, but not sterile. Inside. Yung pinakaloob, hindi yung ano, labas ha, pinag-uusapan natin. Clean lang po iyan. Why? Because it comes in contact with your hands. All right. Ah, last five questions. Ito na tayo. Board exam type of question number 11. When removing a contaminated gown, the nurse should be uh, careful at the first uh, that the first thing she touches is the... So, kapag nagtatanggal ka daw ng sterile gown, putas mo siyang gamitin, alin yung saang party ka magiging careful na hindi mo siya matouch? 
the first thing that the nurse uh, nurse nurse touches is the is it a waist tie uh waist tie and necktie at the back of the gown b waist tie in front of the gown c cuffs of the gown d inside the gown your five seconds starts now Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good letter A. Waist tie and necktie at the back of the gown. Why? The back of the gown is considered clean. The front is contaminated. So, after removing gloves and washing hands, the nurse should untie the back of the gown slowly, move backward away from the gown, holding the inside of the gown and keeping the edges of the off the floor turn and fold the gown inside out discard it in a contaminated linen container then wash her hands again i just give you a full routine that you have to do when removing your gown same as the picture okay so sure <laughs> Jesus ko po yung boses ko. Nangungungo pa ako. What is wrong? Boarding some type of question number 12. Which of the following nursing intervention is considered the most effective form or universal precaution? Alin daw dito ang universal precaution? That's a question. Is it A. Cap all used needles before removing them from their syringes. B. Discard all used on cap needles and syringe, syringes in an imp uh, impenetrable protective container. C. Wear gloves when administering uh, IM medications or injections. D. Follow enteric precautions. Excuse me, your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good letter B. Discard all use and cap needles and syringes in an impenetrable protective container. Why? According to the Centers for Disease Control CDC, blood-to-blood -blood con contact occurs most commonly when a healthcare worker attempts to cap a used needle. Never uncap. Therefore, used needles should never be recapped. Instead, they should be inserted in a specifically designed punctured resistance labeled container. Wearing gloves is not always necessary when administering an IM injection. Entering precautions prevent the transfer of pathogens via feces. Five, se five seconds. Ano na, lilito na ako. Epekto na ito ng mga gamot na pinag-iinom ko dahil. Nakuha ba yun? Nakuha. Okay. Okay na tayo. Body some time question number 13. Nako, last three questions na ha. Ito na tayo. All of the following measures are recommended to prevent pressure, ulcers, except. Alin daw dito ang hindi measures or hindi mga gagawin to prevent pressure, ulcer? Except nga eh, negative question na naman. Masanay ka na sa mga ganitong klaseng tanong ha, kung hindi ka pa familiar sa mga ganyan tanong kasi maraming mga ganito ay nakakalito. All of this are right. Parang ganito lang siya. All of these choices are right except alin doon ang mali. Ganun. Okay? So a massaging the reddened uh, area with lotion, a typographical area po. Area. Error po ito. A area with lotion. B using a water or air mattress. C adhering to schedule for positioning and turning. D providing meticulous skin area. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up. What is your answer? Very good. Massaging the reddened area with lotion. Mm -mm, don't do that. Why? Here's the reason why. Now, the nurses and the other healthcare professionals previously believed that massaging a reddened area with lotion would promote venous return and reduce edema to the area. However, research has shown that massage only increased the likelihood of cellular ischemia and necrosis to the area. So, the question, so what it implies is that whenever there's pressure injury, never massage. Period. Last two questions. Board exam type of question number 14. Bago yon, bago ko basahin. Bago ko basahin, talaga namang sana nga po ay sana nga po ay mag-subscribe ka na pang palaki charm at bukod sa pag-subscribe, i-share mo na ito sa mga friends mo na magta-take din na ngayon darating na board exam sa mga kaklasmate mo. Kasi nako, alam ko naman talaga na alam mo yung nagre-review ko dati na dami kong hinanap. Walang mga ganito eh. Hindi kagaya dati na dati kasi kailangan mo talagang mag mag mag-enroll sa what's this? Sa 
Ano yung tawag dito? Review Center. Pero ngayon, nowadays, napakarami mong resources na makikita online. Hindi lang, of course, sa channel ko. Napakarami rin. Pero itong channel ko is specifically intended for Filipino nurses. Pati na rin dun sa mga, sa, sa mga nurses in general. Kaya naman, tulungan nyo na nga ako. If you wanna stick around, want me to stick around, subscribe ka na. Okay? Nabasahin ko na sa inyo itong board exam type of question number 14. Ito na. <clears throat> Which of the following blood tests should be performed before a blood transfusion? Basic question, very common question na dapat alam mo bilang nurse na nag-aaral at sa mga nagpa-practice na dyan, ano yung mga blood uh, test na dapat gawin before BT? That is your question. Is it A, thrombin and coagulation time? Mm -mm. Is it B, blood typing and cross-matching? Is it C, bleeding and clotting time? Is it D, complete blood count, CBC, and electrolyte levels? Hagsinagot nyo talaga tong mga ano na to, PTTINR na to, sinasabi ko sa inyo. Okay. Very good, nurses. I am so dang proud of you. The answer is letter A. Blood type. Ay, eh. <laughs> Ako pala mali. B. Sorry. Blood typing and cross-matching. Bakit? Before blood transfusion is performed, the blood of the donor and recipient must be checked for compatibility. This is done by blood typing, a test that determines a person's blood type. And cross-matching, which is a procedure that determines the compatibility of the donor's and the recipient's blood after the blood type has been matched. If the blood specimens are incompatible, hemolysis and antigen antibody reactions will occur. The answer is letter B. Hindi mo isasagot yung proton B and coagulation time kasi hindi ka naman naghahanap ng coagulation study sa ano mo, sa pasyente mong IBBT, well, depende na rin kung sa kaso ng pasyente mo, but most likely you're not gonna look for PTTINR hindi naman to procedure, ay hindi naman to surgery, na pwedeng may blood loss, you understand? so, you're gonna look for B, uh, blood typing and cross-matching, malino yon malinaw last questions na tayo, Han, last questions na, the primary pers uh, person the primary purpose of a platelet count, oh platelet count. Ano naman yung purpose daw ng iyong platelet count? Is to evaluate what? Bakit ka ba nag-check ng platelet count mo? Is it a potential for clot formation? B. Potential for bleeding? C. Presence of an antigen antibody response? Or D. Presence of cardiac enzymes? Ano ba? Ito lang tanong sa'yo. Bakit ka? Ano bang reason ng platelet count mo? Para saan ba ang platelet? That's the question. Your five seconds starts now. Okay, kayo masyadong ano nang gigigil ako sa inyo pag minali nyo ito. What is your answer, nurses? Very good! Dang! I'm so proud of you. Letter A, potential for clot formation. Here's the reason why. A plate, uh, platelets are disc-shaped cells that are essential for blood coagulation. A platelet count determines the number of thrombocytes in blood available uh, for promoting hemostasis. And assisting with blood coagulation after injury. It is also used to evaluate the patient's potential for bleeding. However, this is not its primary purpose. The normal count ranges from 1,500... Uh, 150,000 to 350,000 millimeter, cubic millimeters. A count of 100,000 cubic millimeters or less indicates a potential for bleeding. Count of less than 20,000 cubic millimeter is associated with spontaneous bleeding. The answer is letter A. Nako, dyan na nga natatapos ang ating discussion for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangon nyo nga po yung next upload natin next week. See you again after 7 days. Nako naman, talaga naman. And tulungan nyo na nga ako. Ipamalitan nyo na sa radyong sira ang pinakabago, pinakafresh, and na pinakabog ang libreng nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next time. Um, have a good one. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you learned something. Help me grow my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Kuta. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists.
it's a great appeal i'll be putting the links on the description box so simply click the second button right here let's connect follow me on all my other social media accounts everything is at neil gave except for my tiktok account which is neil gave official if you guys want me to stick around make sure that you guys subscribe because it does really help my channel keep on sharing and liking my videos because i really appreciate that don't forget to put your scores on the comment section below because i would like to evaluate the scores of my students i'll see you again next week you have a good one